My last attempt at starting a wild fermentation failed pretty epically, but today we're going to make one that will work. So let's get started. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. I'm very excited to share another uh, wild fermentation video with you. So I previously have tried to do this. I did it with just regular apples and ended up growing some bad bacteria, which killed that mead, I had to throw it away. So I tried it again a week ago without videoing it just to see if I could do it, and I did. This is a wild fermentation mead right here. I did, I put zero yeast in this thing. So uh, what we're using today to allow for a wild fermentation are organic raisins. The reason we use organic raisins is because they don't have any potassium sorbate or potassium metabisulfite, which are a stabilizer and a preservative that are often put in other raisins. A wild fermentation is a fermentation that has zero, um, I'm going to call them synthetic yeast put in. Synthetic basically just meaning um, you're not adding yeast into it, you're letting the wild yeast take over. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start mixing in some ingredients. My recipe today is going to be, I believe this is about 1.8 pounds of honey, a gallon of water, and uh, no yeast at all other than the organic raisins, which will have yeast on them and some other things. But let's go ahead and uh, start creating our must and I'll talk you through some of the important things about a wild fermentation as I'm doing this. I'm gonna be fermenting in this white or this uh, bucket because I want to um, I want to make sure I have enough room to where when I move into a glass carboy like this, it's not gonna have a lot of headspace on it. I have sanitized everything. This is my star sand water, so we're good to go with that. We're first gonna just mix all this stuff in, and again, uh, you probably have made a mead before. If not, it's really simple. You're gonna mix your ingredients together, your water, honey, and normally your yeast. You wanna use spring water, water that's been filtered in some way to get rid of any bad things, bad bacteria and such, which is what we're wanting to avoid. Now, um, let me go ahead and just mix this all up real fast. We've mixed in our ingredients. That's always the step one. Um, if you're making a normal mead, you normally take your yeast you put in, like a Lauvin product or Red Star, something like that. We're not doing that today. We're talking about the organic side, the um, wild fermentation. So here's how I know this thing right here, which is the wild fermentation I experimented with, worked. First of all, I saw it working. I saw the yeast eating the sugars. It started off at 1.080, and it is now at 1.000. So that, the wild yeast took over everything. And I tasted it to see if it tastes fine, and guess what? That's a pretty solid mead. It still has good honey character. It doesn't taste like any bad bacteria have taken over. There's no um, fusels which are bad, not great alcohols that come through that may, uh, might taste bad. Anyways, all that stuff, I know it works because I've seen it, tasted it, and I want to re recreate it. Now here's one thing. Uh, did I do this simply by throwing in raisins into here, the organic raisins? No, unfortunately. So when I first started, I threw a couple handfuls of raisins into this thing, which is what I'm gonna do here as well. So. Um, I'm gonna throw in, let's say two handfuls of raisins. I need lots of yeast to be able to ferment uh, on this thing. So I think two handfuls of raisins will be just fine. Um, and yeah. Now two handfuls is not necessarily a scientific number. That's just a, you know, a lot of times in recipes they say one handful of raisins and that's normally to add some nutrients. Some people say that uh, raisins are nutrients and they don't really act as a nutrient for yeast. But these ones have yeast on them. Uh, everything in the world has wild yeast on it, every single fruit and that stuff. Most of the time supermarkets or other places will put some sorbate or something on the fruit to get rid of any of the bacteria, also killing the yeast there. These are organic, so they don't have any of that. Now, here's what we're gonna have to do. And uh, I'm gonna purposefully do this wrong on the first part of it so I, can, so I can show you why this doesn't work. I'm gonna leave this as it is. So right now this is our two handfuls of raisins and our must, which is our honey water. And I'm not gonna put anything on top of this. 
to let it go. This thing, I don't believe it's gonna start fermenting. What I am gonna do is probably end up having to put some, um, some yeast nutrient and yeast energizer to help these yeast start to ferment because in reality, they don't necessarily just easily start going um, without a little bit of help and that yeast nutrient helps some. We do need to take a gravity reading to see where this is at. So my gravity reading right here shows that I am currently at 1.060 um, gravity, which means that there's a possible ABV, if I'm not mistaken, and according to this, of roughly about 7.8%, almost 8%. Now the important thing about that is a naturally occurring yeast might not have the same capabilities as a synthetic yeast. So they might not have a higher tolerance. Some yeast go up to 18%. A wild yeast, we don't really know. These ones, these yeast could only possibly go up to, let's say, that 8%. I know that these ones go up higher because this, is, this was at 1.080, which means it's roughly about a 10% mead and the yeast chewed through all of that. So uh, let's... Let me show you what happens if you uh, just close your lid with your organic raisins and let the yeast try to reproduce naturally without any help. Um, in my experience, it didn't work before. The yeast just kind of sat. They didn't really wake up all that well. But when I added the nutrient and energizer in, they definitely did. So I'm gonna put my lid onto this thing. I'm gonna put my airlock on and I will come back and tell you in about two days if it is fermenting. If not, we will go and add some things to help them ferment. It's been about 48 hours and there's no fermentation. Um, I'd like to kind of show you that. Okay, so as you can see here, the yeast haven't really started. This is still, again, 48 hours. You normally see activity at this point. So what I'm going to do is add some yeast nutrient because I don't think the yeast have enough. Now I'm adding kind of fake nutrient, so to speak. Um, this is what I'm gonna be putting in there. I'm gonna put in a teaspoon, cause it's a teaspoon per gallon. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and dip this. I believe this will enable the yeast to start fermenting, which is really important um, because we want that wild fermentation. So let me do this. Let me just put this in here real fast. I bet this will kickstart. For those of you in the comments who are saying, wait, now this is not a natural fermentation because you've added something to help along with, you know, the yeast. I haven't given, I give, I have given them nutrient, but I have not given them like an energizer or anything like that. I could pair the two, but I'm not going to use any energizer. I did that with this one. I added some energizer. I'm going to do just the nutrient on this side. Can you do this a different way? I'm sure you can. Um, is it possible for this to start fermenting without the help of yeast nutrient? Possibly, but I have not been able to get it to. So this is a wild fermentation still because I haven't added any yeast. I've just given them food. So let's see if this starts fermenting and then I'll be back to tell you some more information. Here's an update on the wild fermentation. You can see it is fermenting, a little uh, bubbling happening there. The gravity ring for this is currently at 1.030, reminder that we started at 1.060. And we're back, the wild fermentation has finished. Now, uh, I will say I didn't have to add any of the energizer, like I said, just the nutrient, um, which did help it. Uh, I am gonna take a quick taste test here in a second, but first, the way I know it is finished is because I have gone ahead and taken a gravity reading. So let me show you what the gravity reading is. The gravity reading here is not only 1.000, it's actually a little bit low. It is actually one point, it's about 0 0.098. So it's a little bit below um, quote level. With this thing being below 1.000, that means that not only have we fermented through all of the sugars, but it's also gone dry, which means that it basically ate you know, even more of what was there. So most time, most of the time things stop at 1.000. The beginning of this was 1.060. Now they're at 0 0.998. Uh, we should be at roughly, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's like an 8% mead. Um, I'll have to, 
they'll be on the screen there. But uh, we're at exactly about 8%, a little bit maybe above. Let's get a taste test of it. Remember, this is just wild yeast from the organic raisins. I will say, first of all, this is not very aromatic. Um, there's not a lot of honey character on the nose. You get a little bit, but it's really muted. Um, some fruity notes. This, it smells more like a juice to me than it does a, a mead. Um, it also tastes a little bit like a juice. Yeah, it's definitely dry, not a lot of sweetness. Um, raisins do impart some character, so alongside my fruity notes I'm getting from this, I'm also getting like a bright, maybe from the orange blossom, bright, um, okay, this seems like a weird analogy, or a weird way to say this, but it, it tastes like a bright, like kind of grassy smell, if that makes any sense. So the earth, I think earthy, but sometimes earthy can be taken as dark and I'm thinking more bright side. So I get not necessarily grass taste by any means, but um, I'm getting bright earthy no uh, notes from this. Yeah, it's very juice-esque. It's got some heat from the alcohol. Um, it's pretty clear. I mean, looking at this, this thing definitely is not, it, it is semi-clear, I should say. Um, I'll be curious to see if it clears up even more. So it's pretty good now. Uh, I think that there are things that could be better about it for sure. I would definitely improve on the honey character. I think that because these yeast are not necessarily graded for fermenting with wine or mead or anything like that, they don't preserve certain characters. They did not preserve honey character here. But that's not the, the point of this. The point of this was to get a wild fermentation. If you can see in here, the raisins um, have ballooned up to be basically grapes again. And there's some, uh, even some little yeast pockets on them. And uh, I think that's pretty interesting. Did this work? Absolutely. Is this a really great need? Not necessarily in my opinion. Um, I do think that the standard yeast that people make and use are more so graded for these kind of projects. They retain better characters and flavors. They are um, more controllable. The reality is if I had made this thing, let's say I bumped the gravity up to 1.100, there's a good chance that the wild yeast that were in there uh, would not have been able to chew through all of that sugar, which then I would be left with a sweet mead. So maybe in the future, I'll try to make a sweet wild mead or wild sweet mead but uh, I don't think I'm gonna do that yet. So let me go ahead and rack this real fast and then I'll tell you what the next step is. This is the end product here. You see that it is not super clear. Um, it's a little clearer when you pour it into glass, but then of course, like this, not as clear. One thing I do wanna say, these raisins, organic raisins acted as the yeast provider in some very, very, very small way. They also added some nutrients. I want to recommend that if you make a mead that you add real yeast nutrient, not just raisins, because raisins aren't real yeast nutrients. Hence why this thing didn't even kickstart fermenting in the first place. So don't use raisins as real nutrients. It doesn't work. This video is not done. I'm going to actually take, put my airlock on this thing, let it sit for probably another month or so, and then I'll taste test it again. We'll see if the flavors start to develop, and then we'll maybe make a better plan for this thing. So I'll be back with uh, an update in the future. It has been three months since I started this wild yeast mead, and I went ahead and bottled it two and a half months ago, basically a mm, couple weeks after the uh, primary stage when it kind of cleared up. I wanted to go ahead and do that because I needed some carboys and I was just gonna bottle age it. So here's a bottle of it, again, three months after it started. So this thing has uh, had some age, hopefully some time to mellow out or whatever. Let's find out what it's like. Ooh, I heard a slight hiss. So there was some degassing within the bottle, but it wasn't carbonation. Okay, it's nice color. Still not super clear, you can kind of see here. Not mega clear, but it's got a fantastic Ooh, it's got a very nice honey um, orange blossom, that orange blossom honey we used, like bright aroma. Mmm. -hmm. I mean, I, I know I said a lot before that the honey character was not preserved super well. I think that's partially from my initial tasting. 
after the primary when it's yeasty. I think the honey character is decently well preserved. Yeah, ooh, this thing is super. Okay, well, let's try it. It's got some body to it, um, partially because of the ABV, which it's not super high ABV. It's 1060, which was seven and a half, eight and a half percent, something like that. Um, and it has some tannic value from the raisins. And I think raisins do add body to a mead. They don't add necessarily uh, nutrient. It's very smooth. The um, honey and the AB, like not, not ABV, the alcohol has had time to mellow out and to kind of uh, be less pointed in my face. I remember it being pretty hot after the first month and which is normal for any mead. It's, it's got this like a kind of, uh, not nutty, and maybe a little bit nutty, slightly like nutty taste to it. I can't pinpoint what exactly, but the honey character is preserved pretty well. And I'm pleased with that because the wild yeast, like I said before, sometimes can not necessarily retain um, flavors well. Since it's wild, you don't really know what's happening with it. This thing's really good. I'm very pleased with how this turned out. Yeah, I mean, I would do with it, I would be okay if it was a little bit sweeter. But for a wild yeast mead that we did not stabilize, that we didn't add anything other than nutrient in, um, it's really good. On that point, I want to say a couple things. First of all, could I have done this without adding any yeast nutrient? Which, by the way, what I used at the time was DAP or dimonium phosphate. It's basically adding nitrogen in, which is what's needed, what yeast need to ferment. Could I have done this without adding DAP? Absolutely. Would it, would it have been a successful? Maybe? The problem is the yeast need nitrogen and I don't think that there's a lot of nitrogen available for or from those raisins themselves. The raisins again acted as the yeast because they're organic, they had yeast on them, and they, asked, they acted at it as, a, um, as a yeast nutrient as well. And that was because, in a slight way, uh, raisins can be a small yeast nutrient. I have a whole video about that if you want to go see that. I could have done this without adding any nutrient. It just would probably would have taken way longer. There's a, there could have been a chance that the yeast gets stressed, put off, off flavors, and the next thing we know, we have a brew that kind of tastes bad. So uh, a couple important things. You could do this without yeast nutrient, but I would recommend if you want to do it, to try maybe adding some yeast nutrient, DAP, Fermax, um, really anything that is gonna be helpful in that regard. Some people are gonna look at this and go, you didn't make a wild yeast mead because you helped them. It's still a wild yeast mead. I didn't add any extra yeast in there. I didn't add anything that was a separate yeast. I added food for them. So did they have dimonium phosphate in the uh, Viking ages? Probably not. Would they have used it? Had they had it? Absolutely. So don't even say like, oh my gosh, these the barbarians were, you know, Vikings and people who made this originally are against yeast nutrient. They would have been pro yeast nutrient, I promise you. Anyways, enough of that. This has been a lot of fun. It will continue to age. I still have bottles. I probably have 10 more bottles of this, which I store some back for long-term aging, and then I just you know drink some like this on a casual basis. But I've enjoyed this. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit like and subscribe. There's the Man Made Mead Extras channel where I do a lot of tastings like this. And of course, there's this channel where I do lots of reviews and tests and those things. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. This is a wild yeast mead, and I might attempt it in the future with a sweeter version, meaning that I cap out the yeast and then there, you know, there's residual sugar. We'll see if that works, but I've enjoyed this a lot. I hope you have too. I'll see you next time in a future video. Cheers. Mm -hmm.